today in Talking Pictures, we're going to turn our attention to a gentleman who had a great influence on the early development of our museum, Alexander Thompson, who was born in Scotland in 1846, the youngest of the 10 children of John and Euphemia Thompson. After his father died, the family set sail on the ship Silistria, bound for Otago, and arrived here in October 1860. In 1866, Alexander Thompson established a soft drink factory, and he went on to become one of the leading soft drink makers in New Zealand. He later owned the Wairongoa Mineral Springs at North Tyree, which he bought in 1894 to develop as part of the business, and as a recreation spot that became a popular destination for day trippers and picnickers. We also have Alexander Thompson to thank for restoring and expanding what is now Dunedin's oldest surviving residence, Fern Tree House, built in 1849 and owned by Thompson and his family from 1898. Alexander Thompson is often remembered for his great passion for collecting and for his contributions to the city's museums. He was said to have one of the finest collections in the country of Maori curios and art treasures. He was a vice president of the Otago Early Settlers Association in 1902 and was heavily involved in the effort to establish a permanent building to house the museum's collections. Unfortunately, he died in 1904, so he never got to see the new museum open in 1908. But that didn't mean Alexander Thompson's association with the museum ended with his death. On the contrary, his family generously donated a large portion of his collection to the museum some 15 years after his death. The donation included literally hundreds and hundreds of items, much of it visual material like prints and photographs and art. Trouble was, there was so much of it, they had to build an extension to the museum to house it. The Thompson collection was finally made ready for showing off in the new Donald Reed wing of the museum in 1922. We've already seen some of the artworks in the Thompson collection in previous episodes of Talking Pictures. In particular, many of the watercolours that we saw in the episode on George O'Brien. Another artist whose works are well represented in the Thompson collection is Christopher Aubrey, an itinerant painter who was in Otago and Southland in the 1870s and 1880s. When a reporter from the Otago Daily Times was given an advance viewing of the Thompson collection in 1922, he noted five watercolours by Aubrey, all of them showing scenes on the Tyree in 1877. This one shows the Fulton family's property at Woodside. It would appear that when this image was painted, John Iverson owned the nearby hotel at Woodside, as the wagon parked in front of the hotel has his name emblazoned on the side. But Iverson put the hotel up for sale late in 1877, the new owner didn't have it long, selling it quickly after the licensing court refused to transfer the publican's license from Iverson to him. This one shows the West Tyree Hotel and bridge. The John Turnbull Thompson designed bridge opened in 1864 and a banquet was held in the hotel, which was then, was then known as Hooper's Home. The bridge was repeatedly knocked out in floods the first of them in 1868, and this was still happening by the time Aubrey painted the scene in 1877. The two-storied wooden manse alongside the West Tyree Church in this scene would have been quite new when Aubrey painted it. Tenders for its construction were called in December 1875. Here we have a wider view out over the Tyree Plains. The Otago Daily Times reporter viewing the collection in 1922 also noted a large group of works on display showing scenes around the region in the 1880s. He didn't know the name of the artist, but we now know it was John Crawford. Here are a few of those works. Saddle Hill in 1881. This one identified as Town Belt with William Street School. The school on William Street, often known as Parks School, 
after headmaster John Brown Park, opened in 1864 in a building designed by Robert Lawson. It was superseded by the High Street School in 1887. In this one, we have High Street in 1884. Cable cars began operating up High Street in March 1883. And a bit further afield, here we have the old flour mill in Palmerston. There's one work by Peter Power in the Thompson Collection, this one, which shows what the shoreline was like around the outlet of the Water of Leith in the early days of the settlement of Dunedin. Peter Power was an English-born Irishman who immigrated to Australia in 1853 and then settled in Dunedin in the 1860s, but he moved back to Melbourne in his old age. Now we have uh, this painting, same place, different era, showing the old cement works in the area that's now all reclaimed land. These two, showing Dunedin in 1862 and 1866, are by W.S. Hatton, a London artist who produced scenes of New Zealand and Australia and Canada based on paintings by other artists and on photographs for turning into illustrations for the illustrated London news. Here we have the first of another pair of paintings, in oil this time, showing Moiraki. They're by Thomas Redmayne, an Englishman who arrived in Otago with his mother and three sisters on the ship Bosworth in 1857. He was a member of the Dunedin Town Board in the early 1860s. He married in 1862, and his wife Elizabeth had eight children before she died in 1872. A couple of years later, Thomas Redmayne moved to California. There aren't many portraits in Thompson's collection, but there is this one of John Hyde Harris, a lawyer turned politician who arrived in Dunedin in 1850 and married one of Captain Cargill's daughters in 1851. Harris became Otago superintendent in 1863 and mayor of Dunedin in 1867 and was a member of the Legislative Council. A failed land development sent him into bankruptcy and effectively ended his political career. He was imprisoned for debt in 1885 and died the following year. Thompson's collecting wasn't limited to pieces of local significance. On the contrary, there are quite a number of prints and paintings of scenes outside of Otago, including this view of early Whanganui by John Alexander Gilfillan. Gilfillan settled in Whanganui with his wife Mary and their children in the 1840s, but Mary and three of the children were killed when their farm was attacked by Maori in April 1847. John and the surviving children then moved to Australia. This painting is said to have been displayed in a shop window in Whanganui for many years until discovered by Thompson. As they don't directly relate to the social history of Otago, paintings such as Gilfillan's view of Whanganui and this one of Takoiti and his men advancing along a bush track are an underutilised resource, hidden gems within Thompson's collection. So there you have it. A Small Taste of Thompson's Treasures, a collection of great significance, without which the museum just wouldn't have been the same. Thanks for watching.